morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am so thankful to have you guys joining me today. We have some really good topics. We are going to talk about a little bit about autism and Asperger's. We are going to talk about having a more stress-free holiday season, and we are also going to share some cookie recipes, I hope. Um, so for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Tammy Treyer. Hello, Jill. Hey, you. Glad to have you joining me this morning. Um, my family and I live off-grid um, in northern Idaho. We are 100% off-grid with solar power. And we share our journey at treyerwilderness.com. And we educate on our lifestyle at treyerwildernessacademy.com. To pretty much sum up what we offer, we offer faith-led homesteading, preparedness, and off-grid education. Um, we feel it's very important for people to be prepared for all aspects of life, and it has served us well in many occasions, and we take great pleasure in meeting like-minded people and helping them on their journey, too. So, if you are new to joining, I always ask a question every week, and today's question is, what is your favorite food um, for Thanksgiving meal and uh, I have to say I think mine is potatoes I used to make fun of the mountain boy he's sitting across from me right now eating his breakfast and he's laughing because we call him potato boy um, we'd be out hiking 21 miles out hiking and he'll go when we get home can we have mashed potatoes or can we have french fries he's like a major potato monger and I didn't realize that the apple didn't fall very far from the tree. So I'm quite the potato starch girl too. Um, but potatoes, we, we have all kinds of goodies for tomorrow. And uh, before I get into talking about how to make Thanksgiving and your holidays more stress-free, um, no, you don't have to share only just one thing, Jill. That was the, the comment I had yesterday when I posted it on our Facebook page. No, you can list all the goodies you like because I really do have a hard time with that. I'm making my pumpkin skillet cake, which has a caramelized icing on the top, and that might take a first to the potatoes. So, And I also have my cranberry chutney fermenting, which is also another favorite. Anything pumpkin and anything cranberry this time of year is like totally okay for me. <laughs> um, but I wanted to mention something really exciting. Um, the Mountain Boy and I had a really, in my opinion, extremely huge opportunity this past week. Um, God has been offering me great inspiration and really divine direction lately. And I can see, looking back just in the last couple of weeks, how he has been lining things up. And uh, we have something brewing, the Mountain Boy and our family do, um, that we will be sharing a little bit later um, upcoming. Um, but right now, God is lining things up for him. And one of those things that he lined up was being able to actually meet and speak to Temple Grandin. If you are not familiar with Temple Grandin, Temple Grandin, in my opinion, is amazing. She is the pioneer for autism. Um, I believe she's in her 70s right now. Um, she graduated college in 1970, and she has been really leading the way for the autistic and Asperger communities. Um, she has overcome and has accomplished so much. She is a professor at the Colorado College and uh, just has done so many amazing things. And um, she has been my hero since the mountain boy was diagnosed with autism and having Asperger tendencies when he was seven. She was the only one that I could find speaking and sharing on autism. She has many books, and there is a video on Temple Grandin. And if you don't have autism, if you are not associated with anybody with autism, I would highly recommend that you watch the movie. It's very enlightening. Um, it was uh, like watching our story. Um, the Mountain Boy didn't speak in full sentences till he was about nine. And um, he was at a pre premier reading level at, at, in third grade where he went from a pre premier reading level to a high second grade reading level in a matter of seven months while we went, underwent uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. 
the mountain boy has over come a lot. Um, if you um, look on our website um, at tryourwilderness.com under autism you will find a lot of stories shared there. Um, and we will be sharing more because I'm going to touch on autism and I'm going to touch on breast implant illness um, over the next couple weeks. Um, but Temple Grandin has many books but her video is really enlightening and very enjoyable and from a mother's heart and from the perspective of a mother with a child with autism it's very touching um, and it's very empowering she has like I said been my inspiration all these years because when um, Austin was diagnosed there wasn't there wasn't there wasn't um, things available to assist him. There wasn't much knowledge on autism, and it was still being very foo fooed by the medical system. Um, matter of fact, the um, family doctor got very 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 angry with me, and uh, we pretty much severed our ties with him after that point because he he was in uh, denial that Austin had something wrong, and I as the mom could see that there was something something was not right after his immunization. So so I want to encourage you guys to check out Temple Grandin's movie. It's free on Amazon Prime. There's a link below in the description and there's also links to her books. If you are um, experiencing or experienced with autism due to a family member or somebody close to you and you have never heard of Temple Grandin, her books are incredible resources. She's very empowering. Um, hearing her speak was just so amazing. Um, I've always had such a positive mindset and I've always took the angle of pushing the mountain boy out of his comfort zone to the extent that we built a stilted tree house. He was afraid of heights and we built him a stilted tree house that required him to enter with a ladder. And some people may call that cruel but he's overcome his fear of heights. Um, he's been on the roof with the mountain man um, doing uh, roofing uh, with our construction business. Um, he will say that he's still not 100% cured of heights, right? <laughs> but, you know, he, he couldn't even go up a ladder when we built that treehouse. So one of the biggest and best things we've ever done for him was pushed him out of his comfort zone. And it was a push. He did not like it. But once he went through it, he realized how easy it was. And his mentality now is that the sky is the limit. And when he sees things and opportunities for his future, instead of saying if they happen, he now says when they happen. So it's an awesome thing. So if you are affected by autism, I want you to stay tuned. I want you to like our channel. I want you to go subscribe to our newsletter. And I'm boldly saying that because I want to be able to help you on your journey. Um, one of the things that we also that really helped us was our gluten-free and dairy-free diet, which you can find great tips and, and guidance in my cookbook and you can find that by going to tryerwilderness.com slash Tammy Trayer. One of the things was um, taking him off of wheat and dairy uh, made for a very bland diet if you didn't get creative and uh, there wasn't a lot of choices on the shelves for gluten free or dairy free food. Um, there are fillers in everything. So um, I started a new journey of trying to replace um, everything that he enjoyed with a tasteful gluten-free or dairy-free counterpart. And um, I got it to the point that the mountain man couldn't tell the difference on everything but bread. So that, I was very pleased with that and that's why I want to be able to share our journey with you. Austin, what did you think of being able to um, meet and, and listen to Temple share her story? It was really awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. What did you like the most about it? Just about her talking about all the different autistic people that, um, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> um, that had such accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty impressive, wasn't it? Yeah. People that the average man knows but didn't probably realize that they were autistic. Mm -hmm. Brilliant minds. So, yeah. sky's the limit. She empowered you with that? Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Why don't you go back to your breakfast? <laughs> Did you say hello? Hi. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> so, 
it's it's really quite something um, to be able to meet such a person. And um, like I said, she's had such amazing accomplishments. Good morning, Chad, and good morning, Tammy. Uh, so glad to have you guys joining me. Um, we were just talking about um, the benefits of meeting Temple Grandin and how powerful it was. Um, she, Austin was just saying how... Um, you know, one of the things that really impressed him and inspired him was all the people she referred to, Thomas Edison, Einstein, um, the person that created PayPal, Elon, I can't think of his last name, but I'll talk more about him as we go on through our series on autism, but, um, it's really impressive. Um, autistic people, as she puts it, may be weird and may think differently, but they don't belong in the basement of buildings and in, in um, hidden cubicles. They need to be involved because oftentimes their mind is the finishing piece um, to a collaboration on a lot of projects. She um, mentioned several um, with the nuclear power plant failure as well as uh, Boeing's failure with their plane. You know, she said it takes the visual minds to be able to put all the puzzle pieces together versus just the engineers and uh, the book smart individuals. So, um, really unique and very empowering woman. Like I said, I've been, I've, I've was introduced to her uh, when the Mountain Boy was seven. He's now going to be 22. So she's really a very powerful advocate for autism, and I can't wait to share with you what we have brewing for the Mountain Boy. Um, it's to come. I will share that later. Um, how many of you are affected by special needs and autism-related um, individuals? People with borderline personality disorder also test high on the autism scale. I believe that. I believe that. And... And you know, what was really crazy is back when um, Temple was diagnosed, it really broke my heart and made me sad for the mom because I know how much work um, and energy it takes. Um, and, and I'm going to say very openly that I am very blessed to have been chosen to be his mother. Um, for those of you that do experience autism and Asperger and special needs, you are warriors and you were chosen. So remember that at the end of the hard days and remember that through the hard days that you were chosen and there's purpose and that you are a very strong person and um, will be a very huge light to your child. Don't give up. Don't give up. But one of the things that um, happened is that they wanted to institutionalize Temple Grandin. Um, back at that point, if they were dealing with individuals that they didn't understand, the only thing in their mind to do was to institutionalize. And also, um, the doctor blatantly told the mother that the reason there was a problem with Temple is because at some point in her development, the mother was not hugging her and holding her and loving her enough. And Temple happens to be a child that, or was a child that, did not like being touched. Many on the spectrum are like that. And I will say also that I am very blessed that one of the things the mountain boy thrived on was hugs. And um, I'm grateful for that because I don't know what, you know, I don't know that I could have handled not being able to hug my child. That's a very huge thing. Um, I am pretty sure my 17 year old has Asperger tendencies. Okay, Tammy. And, you know, these, the, the, like she said, we might be weird, but but we have so much to offer, and that was one of the things that was so um, important to her was to leave a mark on this earth of how she was able to help people, and um, she she is just a powerful individual on the autism and Asperger, um, you know, spectrum and, and pioneering that, but she is also um, a brilliant brilliant mind. The things that she has accomplished and the things that, that she has done in the cattle industry and um, varying animal industries has been amazing. So it, I, I encourage you to check her out. Question for the mountain boy. Would he push himself if you and the mountain man wasn't around to stand behind him? Sometimes maybe and sometimes no. Okay. I don't know if you heard that, Jill. He said sometimes and sometimes not. Um, 
Would, would you say that you are more apt to do it now than, than previous? Before, you wouldn't have done it at all, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it does take encouragement. It does take empowerment. It, it, takes, it takes somebody special in their lives to help them to realize and to, to just um, make an accomplishment or two to realize that they have that internal ability. And um, it's no different than us. You know, we need to feel needed and important and able to accomplish things as well, even if we're not on the autism spectrum or the Asperger spectrum. So, you know, why should those children be any different? And um, one of the things that Temple said, and I, I highly agree with her, is that the biggest problem today is that these children are coddled. And I don't mean any disrespect with that. Um, but she's right, because when Austin was in elementary school, one of the teachers, and, and she was a beautiful woman, she was, she was very dedicated to the children, and it wasn't, I don't think, that she was trying to make her job easier. I think she was trying to make life easier for Austin. But they were playing games, and he was getting very upset because he was losing. And she asked me if it would be okay if she changed the rules to the game. And I didn't hesitate on that. I absolutely said, no way. Because that would be setting him up for failure. Life is wins and losses. And if you only have wins in life and you get out into the real world, what is that going to be like? These children need to experience the highs, the lows, the wins, the losses. They need to be pushed out of their comfort zone, as many of us do. I'm a go-getter and I'm a striver to be on the other side of my comfort zone. That's an, in, that's an internal mechanism that I am thankfully and very grateful for um, that I have that because it has gotten me to great places because of that internal mechanism. But everybody's different and, and everybody um, has different personalities and um, regardless if we're on the spectrum or not, you know, we need to push ourselves sometimes. I need to push myself, myself in certain circumstances, and so does the mountain man, even though we are extreme risk takers. We still need to push ourselves out of certain circumstances, you know. So I highly encourage you folks that are out there with children on the spectrum or that you know people on the spectrum or if you have grandchildren on the spectrum, encourage them, push them. Don't coddle them. Um, they will gain so much every time they step out of their comfort zone. And um, again, I can't wait to share what we have coming ahead because it'll just show um, even more when I, you know, um, back up what I'm saying. So if you know, and Jill, that was a great question. That was a really great question. And if you guys have other questions, I would love to start doing Q and A's. Um, we get a lot of questions in our newsletters and on YouTube and Facebook, and I try to answer them on here. But I would love to have a lot more Q&As because I, I truly believe that there's a lot of people out there with more questions on homesteading, preparedness, survival, off-grid living, autism, any of that stuff. And I would love, absolutely love to field those questions for you. So don't ever hesitate. And I truly believe that no question is a bad question. You'll never learn if you don't ask. So don't hesitate. Really looking forward to hearing more. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. And... Um, as I said also, I am going to be very openly speaking about breast implant illness. So if you know people that are um, dealing with breast implant illness, silicone toxicity, mold toxicity, um, please let them know or share our channel because I have been getting incredible amounts of emails and correspondence from women that are, are, are dying as I was. Um, I was given a second chance. Um, my organs were failing. It is a very awful, scary illness. And um, it's not just with implants. People that are getting silicone mesh put in for hernias, um, there, um, the IUDs, there are ports being put in for cancer. Um, and I know of several that are put in in the spine, and once they are in, they cannot be removed. So the people are healing from cancer and dying from silicone poisoning. So it is huge, and I want to talk about it, and I want to share more about this with everybody because it is just um, insane, the amount of people that are affected and the 
insane thing also is that the medical system is still in denial and is still not handling the things properly and um, it needs to be brought to the attention of more and more people. So I'm going to be speaking very openly about that moving forward also. Um, so if you guys haven't checked out Temple Grandin, please check her out. The video is, is so much fun for us. We really enjoyed it. It was very enlightening. Um, the Mountain Boy is a very literal thinker, so our dinner table and often our uh, long drives are very entertaining because what um, is meant to be taken literally, he doesn't get and everything else he takes literally. So it's very, very funny. I will have to come up with some of his Austinisms and share some of those because it's been really funny. And it'll also just give you a better understanding of people on the spectrum and help us as a society to be more um, accepting because these kids and these individuals are brilliant and um, they have a lot to offer if we would allow them to. And I'm just gonna say this, moving forward, my conversations are going to be directed toward employment and how our system is failing and how we are going to work around that. So keep that in mind too. We watched a movie, it was excellent. Yeah, and, and just one of the things that always pops in my mind, Tammy, is when sh they said that they get up with the roosters, or with, with the chickens, I forget how, oh, when the, cr when the rooster crows, we get up when the rooster crows, and with her literal mind, she pictured all of them and the rooster sitting on the roof crowing, so it was pretty funny. Um, again, she has a literal mind, and she, and she uh, focuses um, in pictures. Okay, now I wanted to share a little something with you guys too. Um, I woke up extremely tired this morning and I've been really cold and I noticed that my throat was doing something funny yesterday but didn't put it all together until after we just got back from our walk. I'm obviously coming down with something. So I've got my elderberry juice that I made a couple weeks ago and um, I put some things in the description below and I'd like you I would love for you guys to watch them. Um, this is a huge aspect of healing from all kinds of things. Um, while I was um, in a very rough patch of healing for like the first two years after my surgery, my lymphatic system was clogging on a very regular basis and it was just causing my system to be very inflamed because um, your lymphatic system gets rid of all the garbage and, and drains your system. So. With that not operating properly, I needed to uh, have deep muscle therapy, and um, that has solved the problem. But occasionally, my lymphatic system clogs. Right now, my uh, right ear is clogged, and, and I can drain that myself, and so can you. And that's what I put down below. Hope, oh, thank you, Candy. Candy says she hope it's not the junk that she had. Yeah, um, we haven't. I went to church, but I haven't been out and about too awful much around people, so hopefully not. <laughs> um, but I'm going to fight it. Uh, so, one of the things, the first video that I share is my video, and that video is opening ports on our body. And I know that sounds really weird, but we have our own ports that basically work as a suction and help our body to drain, it helps our lymphatic system to drain. And the purpose of that video first is once you open these ports, there are two right here on your chest, and then there are some on your legs and also on your feet. And once those are opened, it causes your lymphatic system to pool. So when you do the rest of the drainage, it actually helps to pool and, and get the fluids and the clogged lymphatic system and your ear and face uh, sinuses draining. So if you get a head cold this year, you want to use my video first so you can bookmark these and add them to a playlist or add them to a watch list or whatever you want to do. And I store them in Evernote. Uh, I keep Ever You guys hear me talking about Evernote all the time. It's an um, app that can be used on Windows and on um, Mac as well as on uh, smartphones. And you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote. It is, has been my saving grace for years. Um, when you do the first video, you'll open your ports. The next two videos are for your sinuses and your lymphatic and your ears. And our sinuses run all through here, all through here, down around, in here. So when you start working them, you work them and move, bring everything down. And when you start working, you're going to actually start choking on um, the drainage, which is good. It might be gross, but it's good because it's getting it out of your system and it's draining. 
and you will feel instant relief with your ears too. So if you go through winter with a lot of ear infections, this is going to be very important for you. And you can do this to your children as well. Um, I also have my On Guard in a diffuser and, and use eucalyptus. I love my oils in the diffusers. They are um, very helpful. And people ask, what oils are do I use? What are safe? I use plant therapy. I use uh, Rocky Mountain oils. I use doTERRA. And I use some Young Living. And just to give you an example, I love doTERRA's On Guard. It just has such a good smell to me. But this is very similar to Young Living's Thieves. Thieves is actually better to get mold out of your environment than this one is, but this one smells nicer and um, has the same oils. There's just a little bit of a difference in, between the two. So, you know, I don't foo-foo different oil companies because there's a lot of, you know, oil politics. But um, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash plant therapy. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash oils. And if you know somebody local that does doTERRA or uh, Young Living, they are great oils to work with. Now oils are also okay. Um, but there are oils out there that aren't um, the best quality. So I am very careful that I am getting uh, properly processed oils, non-GMO oils, so that you're getting, you know, oils that are going to benefit you and, and not harm you. Um, so just keep that in mind. But back to the um, videos. If you watch them, they're very detailed and they will help you to drain. You can see that my eyes are puffy. I need to do a drainage because my ear is clogged, but I didn't have time. We just went out for a walk before doing this, so... And I didn't want to miss my walk. So I will go do my meditation and my breathing and my lymphatic drainage um, when we are done here. But um, definitely bookmark these videos. They are very, very helpful and will help you to quickly um, get rid of the germs and colds. When you do these drainages, it opens up your sinuses and opens things up and gets things flowing the way they're supposed to and in turn you will heal a lot faster. Something else you can do is if you have a tr trampoline, a small trampoline or even your kids in the backyard, by jumping on a trampoline that also helps open the lymphatic system and helps you to drain. Now that sounds funny but it's called rebounding and um, it's a really good way also to uh, get yourself um, on the healing process. Oh, cool. Chad says, this is all how I feel today. Yeah, so draining and, and getting this everything moving, it just was asking. Oh, it was spinning and spinning. I think the enemy hates it when I share good things on how you can heal because the enemy uses sickness to get at us too. So anyway, I want to real quick list here um, the prayer requests that I have right now because I know I have a lot of prayer warriors on here. Um, we have a long list of people that need prayer and have reached out to me, and I feel so very blessed by this. Um, I'm just going to list them, and uh, God knows what their needs are, uh, and I'm not going to share their needs, but I am going to share their names, and just if you are some of my prayer warriors, if you would just put them on a list and lift them up, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have Tia and Shelly, Jess. I'm going to mention Deborah Kidd and Pat Kenny because they are both going through cancer. And hallelujah with Pat Kenny. Pat Kenny is on a really good healing process right now, and I believe that that is a result of all of our prayers. So keep praying for him. Um, we need God to heal his heart. The chemotherapy is, and, and that is uh, killing his heart. And as of right now, we are on another journey where it is he's on the mend. So keep praying that uh, God is able to heal his heart and rid his body of cancer. Even though he has a non-curable cancer, I want Pat to be a walking miracle. And Deborah Kidd as well. She's going through cancer as well. So pray for them. Um, we have Diana. Uh, Diana is one of our uh, watchers and viewers and she is looking for a homestead and needs prayers for either a homestead or a rental property to come available for them and we have Libby and John and Elna and Patty and Andrea if anybody watching or watching the replay or on YouTube needs prayers, please don't hesitate. You do not need to share the circumstances if you are uncomfortable doing that. God knows, and, and that's all that matters. Uh, we can just continue to lift you in prayer and, and, and help you with 
you know, just blankly pray, pray for you and God will take care of the rest. So please don't ever hesitate to ask for prayer. Um, I'm going to see if this opens. Ha, it opened. Okay. My uh, Evernote was stopped up on my iPad. Now, um, if anybody has questions on any of the things I'm sharing, please don't hesitate. If you have other questions, don't hesitate as well. I love your comments. And in case you weren't aware, today's episode, we are asking for recipe exchanging. Hello, Cindy. I shared a recipe down below for my grandmother's um, sour cream cookies. They are the most soft, moist, amazing cookies, and that is, has always been my favorite. So I'm sharing my favorite recipe with you. There is a link to the recipe that's on our website. And if you guys want to share your recipes um, in the comments, that would be awesome. Noted the request. We'll be praying for all. Thank you, Tammy. Really appreciate that. Cindy says, so glad to see you live. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. The question I asked everybody today was, what is your favorite food for Thanksgiving? Mine is um, potatoes. Potatoes with lots of butter and lots of Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt. And then it... I like pumpkin pie and my pumpkin skillet cake and yes so later today when I'm done here I'm gonna actually do my devotions do some breathing meditation and and then I'm gonna take a short nap and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my day in my kitchen and all the recipes that I'm making today are below I did share my cranberry chutney recipe which is amazing it's a fermented cranberry dish it is just awesome and the link is down below and the uh, Grandma Robertson's pumpkin pie is shared uh, with me from one of our audience members, uh, Melinda. So I want to thank her again. I thank her every year for sharing that recipe with us because it is just an amazing uh, pumpkin pie recipe. So thank you, Melinda. And you can find that on page 77 of my cookbook or you can find the link below to the uh, post on our website. And then I'm also making the Treyer Wilderness Pumpkin Skillet Cake, which has a caramelized icing on top. And that is down below also or on page 73 of my cookbook. Awesome. I saw your breads that you made uh, yesterday, Tammy. She said she's making pie today, too. Um, she made a whole bunch of loaves of bread. I'm going to be making, I haven't decided, we are having um, organ meat again this evening. I'm having liver and heart, and I'm going to make some flatbread as well. I'm thinking about maybe some buttermilk biscuits for tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. So today will be a full day in the kitchen. And this leads me into how to stay a little more stress-free for the holidays. I don't think we'll ever, ever be completely stress-free, but we can certainly focus on trying to be less stressed. Um, so if you have cookie recipes, if you don't have them right now, but you want to pop back later and share them, um, I would love to have your recipes shared in the comments. If you are on YouTube or watching this after the fact, you are welcome to share too, because the more the merrier. I love new recipes, and I love seeing what everybody's favorites are. So um, mine is down below again. It's the sour cream cookies that my grandmother used to always make. They're just amazing. Of course, they used to use Crisco in the recipe, so mine has been altered. Um, Crisco is not an oil. I think it's a plastic. But anyway, um, being stress-free is a conscious effort on our part. And... Um, if you know others that can benefit from what I'm sharing today, please do share this video on your, on your wall and such because I'm trying to reach as many people with our message and the different tips and the different tricks. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that go through the holidays and struggle, not just with stress, but with different things. And um, I, I, I want to be able to reach people during the holidays and all year long. So help me to share if you feel that you can uh, reach people as well. Um, awesome. I would love to have you share a recipe later, Tammy. Thank you. Um, so one of the things I want to say um, with the holidays is there's a lot of people that may have lost loved ones over the year. They may have lost loved ones previously over the holidays. Um, so their holidays are a hard time. If you know of such people, I want you to make sure that you're doing some extra loving up on them. And, you know, when people are hurting or when they are lonely, um, they're not typically going to come and tell you that they don't have somewhere to be for the holidays or that they are lonely. Um, but if that is you and you are lonely or you are struggling through the holidays, 
you don't have to be like the typical people and it's okay to confide in others and let them know that you could use <sighs> ah it stopped spinning okay what I was saying is if, if you are struggling through the holidays or you're lonely you know one thing we have to keep in mind and I will be talking more about that in a little bit is that we're not all telepathic and that we don't know and it would absolutely warm my heart to have somebody say to me you know ex express their struggle to me and open my eyes so that I can be a light to them because oftentimes it's not that um, the people around you are ignorant we just don't realize um, that you're struggling because um, I know how well um, I might be hurting on the inside but I make it a strong point to be happy on the outside so I know there's other people like that please if you're hurting or you need prayer or you need company don't hesitate to ask it's there's no need for people to be alone for the holidays okay so keep that in mind and as for the rest of us when you do know of someone that is hurting or that may be hurting um, reach out to them uh, it's a great feeling to be able to welcome people into your home and and uh, it's also amazing to see them shine when they feel loved so just keep that in mind now that's one way that we can help um, de-stress people's lives but in our own homes uh, we have a tendency uh, us women especially but I know there's men like this too that we take on all the tasks ourselves because we are super women wonder woman we can do it all I was there and um, I don't necessarily have to go back there because I don't have to do it all and I can let other people in my family shine by helping me and I can let people that come into my home who offered to help also help me and shine so keep that in mind we do not need to do everything um, there's just no need and that is one huge way that many of us stress ourselves so what if you're that kind of person and it's not a bad thing it's a, it's a good quality because it, it is, makes us pushers and makes us um, who we are it makes us accomplish things sometimes that other people don't um, but it also um, allows us to stress ourselves out makes ourselves unhealthy and um, eliminates other people from being able to serve because we think we have to do it all so make a list of things that you can delegate and um, if there are certain things you like doing, then do those things, but delegate the things that maybe you don't like to do. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm talking to my machine. It's spinning and spinning. Okay. Something else to keep in mind. Um, you hear me talking a lot about prayer, and you're starting to hear me talk a lot more about meditation and breathing. Every morning since um, the Transcendence uh, uh, docu-series that was a couple weeks ago, I have been incorporating breathing and meditation into my devotions and I'll tell you what guys how incredibly powerful it is it takes 15 20 minutes of my time of my day and I can make it take less but I, I and I can make it take more, longer if I need to but just for 15 minutes out of your time and out of your day you can be so inspired and so empowered and so relaxed and um, it is very powerful and I want to encourage you all to do it I will add links later to the breathing techniques that I am using there is a small little mini course that you can it's an email mini course it doesn't you can do it at your own time and and check this fella out his name is Wim Hof and um, guys when I take I always talk about that still quiet voice but through the meditation that I have been doing lately I'm with the doors that are opening in our home God has been blessing me with such direction and such peace and such comfort and I want to encourage you guys to step into that it takes 15 minutes and it is 15 minutes well spent and it will de-stress you in such a great way so consider that and like I said I will set I will provide links a little later I didn't get that in this morning and I wanted to now learning to ask for help is huge because we try to do it all learning to ask to help is also huge I'm going to talk to the men right now men I understand that sometimes you are probably afraid to get in the kitchen or to get involved or to ask for help because us women are greatly stressed trying to do it all right um, you may come home see your wife frantically getting dinner ready um, so you're you back away you're afraid to get involved or you may not see how you can be involved 
One thing that the mountain man does that is very powerful is he asks me, would I like some help or could I use some help? When he doesn't see what I need, he asks. And that gives him one of two opportunities. One, that I will say, no, go ahead, you rest, you've worked hard all day. Or two, yes, tonight I am really stressed and I could really use your help or I'm trying and this isn't working, could you help me with this? I, n I understand why you would be fearful, but learning to ask if you can be of help is a huge brownie point. So keep that in mind, guys, okay? Now, ladies, your men are not telepathic. They do not know what you are conjuring in your head and trying to get him to understand. He can't pick up on that. He won't pick up on that. We are different. A woman might understand what your needs are. A man is not going to, and that's no offense to you men. We are made differently. So don't stand there and start smoking out your ears because you are expecting him to know what to do. He's not going to. Just politely ask him if he would be willing to empty the dishwasher so you can put the dirty dishes in. Or ask him to get something out of the oven that you can smell is ready to come out but you can't get to it. It's just the way it is. And when we learn to communicate with one another and offer our help to one another and understand that you know, we don't understand each other the same, lives will be so much better, marriages will be so much better, and your holidays will be a lot less stressful. Jill says, watching the little circle spin on the side of your face makes it appear that you have a dimple. Ah, that's really funny. <laughs> I always am fearful when it starts spinning, if what I'm saying to my machine, you guys can hear, or if it's recording it and comes back and shares that. I never know. I have watched a couple of videos to make sure, so I don't think so, because I sit here like talking to it, <laughs> trying to get it to respond. Okay, so... Another way to be less stressed in the holiday season is not attending everything that comes your way. Uh, we always feel... Okay, it has stopped spinning again. Sorry, guys. At least it's not as bad as it was the last time. Okay, so something else that you can do is I was saying that we, we take on every invite that we are given. So we are stressing ourselves out to be places that are just darn near impossible to attain or to get there in a unstressed fashion or uh, not being late. So it's not a requirement for us to go to everything. And I'm sure that most people will be understanding. Um, but we, one of our benefits of being 2,500 miles away from family is that we have made our own holidays and our own um, traditions. And it has made it a lot of fun. We're not being torn between two different families and overeating. Well, we might be overeating. Uh, we're trying not. The pastor just preached on gluttony, so we're, you know, we try not to. But being able to make our own traditions has been really nice. We do miss our family, but we've created a little bit of a family away from home as well. And we also try to nurture people that don't have places to go. And um, slowing things down is really important too. You may not be able to, to you know, separate yourself from the requirement of going to both families or multiple family gatherings, but slowing things down, not taking on as much, um, eliminating uh, volunteering for everything that comes your way, you know, you're supposed to enjoy life and enjoy the holidays. It's important to contribute, it's important to serve, and it's important to help, but it's also important to make sure that through the process you're not killing yourself or making your family suffer because we are taking on too much. So just keep that in mind. One of the things I did when my kids were little is instead of going to both families, I had everybody come to me. So in turn, I ended up with more work but I ended up with less stress. So, you know, you can put a spin on different things and maybe kick things up a little bit and do things just a little bit differently. What are some ways that you guys have found to uh, create less stress in your lives over the holidays? One of the thing, other things that has created less stress is shopping. You guys know I hate shopping. So I am not a Black Friday shopper, ever. I did it one time in my entire life and I will never ever do it again and I did that with a one or two year old so 
it was not a fun experience and I just don't like all those people so avoiding the stores I do shop online when you know over the years I do my shopping online this year we're not shopping we are unable to shop and over the last couple years here we've been making gifts for one another so you know you can change things up however you choose uh, a gift is not a requirement to show your love also just remember that so what are some ways you guys have avoided stress um, I imagine there's a delay since I've been spinning so uh, feel free to share if you're on YouTube or watching this after the fact do share um, we can help each other out there's lots of different things we can do differently um, one of the things that I'm doing today and that I know Tammy is doing also uh, is spread out your cooking for the holidays. Um, if you can cook things ahead of time and make things ahead of time. The chutney I had to make ahead of time because it needed a couple days to ferment. Breads that will, that will sit and, la and be fine. Um, some of your baked goods. I am actually making my sweet potato um, cooking the sweet potatoes today so that they get soft so that I can make the sweet potato bake out on my grill and have that baking on the grill because my oven will be full of mule deer and elk roast this year yes very excited about that uh, Tammy says I don't like shopping either I delegate tasks awesome awesome I'll tell you what there is such joy in delegating <laughs> it took me uh, let's see 45 years to delegate so don't wait that long it's really ridiculous because delegating is great and um, like I said it gives other people purpose so and and it's good to help others and delegating is not just at the holidays it can be in everything you do I delegate in my business I delegate in everything and it is really a nice thing we don't have to be super women or super men um, the only thing that happens there is we kill our health uh, due to excess stress and wear ourselves down and wear ourselves out so keep that in mind um, but being able to bake things ahead of time and um, you know if you have guests coming you know I'm sure many will ask what can we bring um, it's always fun in our home to do that because we get to experience other people's favorite dishes um, that's where the sweet potato bake came from because one of my friends brought that a couple years back and it was so incredibly good you can't go wrong with sweet potatoes, maple syrup, uh, non-GMO organic marshmallows, and lots of butter and a little bit of salt. You just can't go wrong. That is just such a good combination. And then you bake it till the marshmallows are nice and crispy on top. So my grill will be working, my oven will be working, my stove will be working tomorrow, and the house will smell really good. So spreading things out, making um, uh, your day easier on the actual day of the event is so much nicer. So how many of you are hosting um, Thanksgiving? We will be hosting here. Uh, we say it's our gathering of the misfits. Uh, a lot of the people that join us are actually either from Pennsylvania or out of state and uh, just makes it kind of funny. So um, Chad says, yes, you can. What, sp uh, spread things out or tire yourself out? I imagine you mean the tire yourself out. Um, and, and yes. Um, I did that for years trying to be the superwoman and it didn't serve me any anything good um, so let me see what else I was sharing today I have my cookie recipe and um, I have some good books I'm reading I will be sharing those upcoming as well but I want to encourage you guys to have a less stressful holiday um, the other thing that I did forget to mention is we always have I've experienced it in the past. I know I won't experience it tomorrow, but in the past I have experienced um, stressful people, people that maybe don't view the holidays the same way or life the same way. Now let me see. I'm going to try to move this down. Oh, it does move down. Um, Jill says, I used to do my dehydrating based in part for family get-togethers. Okay. And, oh, sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay Chad gotcha so yes that is a wonderful dish and yes the sweet potatoes <laughs> I see you have a green face behind the sweet potatoes so that are you saying you don't like sweet potatoes and Tammy says I am the 11th oh she's hosting it 11 of us and my in-laws nice nice 
But um, sometimes we, we deal with sour people during the holidays, too, the Grinch. And everybody, you know, keep this in mind, guys. Everybody has a story. Everybody had a previous experience in their life that made them who they are today. So if somebody doesn't like the holidays, um, you could open the door and ask them why, or you could just show them grace. Oftentimes, people's story is, is eye-opening. I think I shared it once before when I was waitressing. All the other waitresses would not wait on the nasties. That was my job. And I didn't really care. That was kind of my, they were my project people to kind of get them to smile before they left the restaurant. I really enjoyed that. And the one fella, he wasn't really nasty. He was just always kind of, he wasn't even gruff. He was just looking back, probably more sad than anything else, but he looked grumpy. But he was, he was a very nice man. And what happened is a couple months back, he had lost his wife. So these women would see him come in. He'd look grumpy. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. And, and, they, and when they did have to wait on him, they would be nasty to him. So, you know, they got with, you know, treat others as you want to be treated, you know. I mean, you treat somebody like dirt, you're going to get dirt. And I, I waited on this man, and I started a conversation with him. And he shared with me that he had lost his wife, and it's just really sad and having a hard time. And, you know, our instant reaction to negative people is to assume that they're just miserable. But remember that everybody has a story. We do too. I walk around oftentimes with a smile when I'm hurting inside. That's just because, like I said, that's my nature. I want to be pleasant. I want to be, just because I'm having a struggle doesn't mean that I have to make the rest of the world struggle with me. And that's my mentality. But um, there's other people out there like that. And, uh, you know, give them grace. Give them love. You know, we are, we are called to love people. And uh, that has always been my calling is to love on the on the nasties because you know inside There's something besides nasty. They just maybe need nurturing. So anyway, those are my ramblings But and Chad does not like sweet potatoes. I'll keep that in mind <laughs> So you'd be the mashed potato guy with lots of butter and salt, right? <laughs> We're hoping for a turkey um, I have elk roast and mule deer out and thawing, but um, if the opportunity arises that turkey show up in my yard today or that I get out on another walk and I find turkey or the mountain men and uh, are coming home or at, on a job and find turkey, um, we will have turkey. So it's a, a definitely uh, a welcome dish. Uh, wild turkey is amazing, especially if it's cooked nice and slow and long on low heat it just falls apart. Many people feel that wild turkey is very tough, but it's because it's cooked too fast. So keep that in mind also. So anyway, guys, that, I think this is enough of my ramblings. You guys have things to do, and I don't want to keep you from them. I want to wish you all a very blessed Thanksgiving. Yes, but garlic, pepper, and butter. Awesome. Yes, and you know what else is really good on mashed potatoes? Um, horseradish. Horseradish, along with the butter and the salt. You, Butter and salt kind of go on everything I eat. They are things I will never give up. And my, my mother-in-law, I love her. She says, if I'm not careful, I'm going to get salt diabetes. But every time I do my blood work, my, my sodium is low. That's because I'm eating the healthy salts. Keep in mind that Morton's is not salt. It's petroleum. So there is a huge difference in healthy salts. <laughs> but anyway, okay, we're back. She's getting ready to pray, and it starts spinning. So I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Dear Jesus, I just come to you today, and I thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed on our family and the blessings that you are bestowing on our audience. Thank you for healing Pat and just uh, giving him this huge boost and, and hope um, of healing, Lord. Uh, we just thank you for that. And Lord, you heard the long list of names that need prayer, and uh, I'm going to try to remember them all. We have Tia, and uh, Diana, and Andrea, and Libby, and Elna, and Pat, and Deborah, and I'm not sure if I said Diana, and I know there's, I believe, a couple in there that I've missed, John. Just, Lord, lift them and help them in their circumstances. Heal those that need healing. 
And Lord, just uh, wrap your loving arms around them. Wrap your loving arms around all those that are in need of prayer and are afraid to ask. And Lord, just be with our entire audience. Keep your hand of safety on them as they travel for the holidays. Give them a stress-free holiday enjoy their holiday and uh, focus on you gratitude at this time of year is so huge but it should be something we do daily and just thanking you for what you do and even more so for what you're gonna do Lord I just thank you for the food that you've blessed each of us with and the company and the fellowship that comes with Thanksgiving and Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. And I just ask that you bless each of our audience and just uh, help them to look to you and also to serve over this holiday season. Uh, there's so many out there that could use love and serving. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. And uh, again, just keep your hand of safety and blessing on, on each and every one of us. And we ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. Hey, George. Glad to have you on here. My dad used to have corn relish on his mashed potatoes. Oh, that sounds good, too. Mashed potatoes is one of those things that you can mix with anything, because I actually mix that with my, my cranberry uh, chutney, too. Oh, Chad says, oh, man, that's a great idea. I'm trying it. Yeah, horseradish on the potatoes. Horseradish on anything. And my hot mustard recipe that's on the website does not have horseradish in it, but it has the taste of horseradish, and it's just really, really amazing. So um, that's another good one. Uh, the Mountain Men use, with the exception of the Mountain Boy, or Mountain Man Jr., um, they use the hot sauce, and our hob sauce this year got really hot, and two of my jars did not seal, so they are... Once you open the jars of hot sauce, they get hotter with the air hitting them. So there's two sitting in there heating up, and they have the hot one already open. So um, that's another thing that they add to everything. So thank you guys for your uh, Thanksgiving wishes. I wish you guys all a very blessed, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving. I will see you next Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Standard Time on Facebook Live. And I do share this on Patreon, and I also am sharing it on YouTube. So you have lots of options. If you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please do so by going to treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter. I started them back up again on Monday. They will be going out every Sunday. And I just redesigned the website. Uh, it finally is taking on the look that I was going for. Uh, it's just like the cobbler. Uh, kids don't have good 